Hey there, passive traders. This is Alan Sama of the Option Genius Podcast. Today's episode is really special because it is a recording of a one on one coaching call with one of our students named Keith. Now, Keith had submitted some excellent questions that you guys probably have as well. Stuff like, you know, how do I really get started? What do I need to focus on? How much can I actually make trading options? This is really doable for me. Because you see, Keith, he's in his 40s, late 40s, and he is finally serious or finally ready to take his investments seriously. So we got on the call and I asked him to record it and we did. And it is turned out to be really, really good. I mean, we covered a lot of different topics. So this one is definitely one that you probably want to listen to three, four, five times because we covered a lot of topics, but some topics I only basically skimmed on the surface. So, you know, if you if you take the time to actually look into everything that we talked about, you're going to learn a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff, especially if you're just starting out or if you have been doing this for a while like Keith. I mean, Keith has been one of our students for at least a couple of years now. And so when you're ready to take the next step, when you're ready to get started and be serious and really, really make a difference in your trading, these are the steps in this coaching call that we laid out that you should be taking. And then also, if you are interested in being coached in this manner with Keith or one-on-one, just like Keith did, you can always reach out to us at help at optiongenius.com. If that is something that you need to take it to the next level, we recently have just opened up a few couple spots for new coaching clients. And if this is something that you're interested in, please let us know. Just email us at help at optiongenius.com and we will take care of you. All right, so let's get on with the episode. At Option Genius, we believe that you deserve freedom, financial freedom, so that you have no more worries and more than enough money. Time freedom, so that you could do what you want, when you want to do it. And choice freedom, to live your life on your terms. But the system and Wall Street are rigged against those little guys. So how do we fight back? Well, my friend, that's what this podcast is all about. My name is Alan Sama, and this is the Option Genius Podcast. Okay. All right. So, Keith, how are you doing? I'm well. Thank you. Thank you very much for talking. No, no, no. Thank you. So, what I want to do is if you could tell me a little bit about your background, tell me a little bit about yourself, and then after that, then we can go ahead and and jump into your questions. I have a full-time job. I have a wife and four kids, teenagers. It happens to be, very luckily, a good job, a really good job with a, a fine schedule. So I'm not, I say that for a reason because I've been trading for years, like over a decade with no progress, maybe because I don't need it. You know, it's not like I'm hungry. I don't need it. Like I want to get out of my job or anything like that. I've just delved into it for years thinking someday I'll get it. Someday I'll figure out the niche I want and someday I'll, but too much time has gone by. I've, I've liked spending time learning, but I'm, I feel like now I'm wasting time. I need to actually do something productive. I, you know, I'm 48. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to take my retirement account that's being managed by a firm in New York who's not really doing the job. I mean, they have been up until, like I said, recently, I mean, just like everyone else, they're doing well, I think, with their niche, but I can look at the numbers and say, okay, this isn't going to do it. This isn't going to be my retirement. This It's not going to happen. I've got to do something more active myself. So that's kind of why I'm thinking now, okay, I got to kind of, you know, either stop or get moving. And I've had some, some bad losses in the past. So I don't really need to go into those, but it's just one of those things that a lot of traders have gone through. I don't need to, you know, boy, you want to get into that. But, um, you know, enough where I'm like, okay, I've, I've had enough. I've got to do something. And like I said, I'm 48. I'm looking into, you know, what's the future going to hold? What am I going to do when I retire? Uh, what's my nest egg going to be like? There's education, kids' education, kind of a, a little bit of a factor. My my brothers are, we are kind of talk a lot to each other about things. We used to practice together, but I moved away and, and you know, I still talk to them a lot. But so we talk about ideas a lot. And they're getting into some things business-wise after their dental career to account for what are they going to do in retirement. And I, you know, I look at what they're doing. It's pretty cool, but I know this trading thing will work and can work. I know it can, I, but I just haven't gotten it off the ground. And now I feel more like I have the need to. So mm-hmm. 
I don't, again, think I've gone into as much detail as I wanted, but I don't want to go, I don't want to take, you know, all this time just tell my back on, you know, meaning to take up your time. But you, I'm kind of a typical story. I mean, I, I probably, I'm not really unique. So as far as trading goes, I've always, basically, I've, why I haven't been successful, number one, is rules. I, I know the rules and I don't follow them. I follow the rules in my business. I'm very, very disciplined in my business with overhead and all that stuff. But for some reason, trading, I get at the casino. If I ever go to a casino, which is rare, I'm pretty disciplined. I don't have a gambling problem. <laughs> but with trading, I don't follow. I, for some reason, that's different. I don't follow the rules. I don't do what I'm supposed to do. And I've been trying to figure myself out. I think that part, part of this, too, is I've... You know, I've got these kids that I'm busy with and I don't, I, I sit at the computer for a while and I like doing it, but I feel like I got to figure out a niche that does involve me at the computer a lot so I can, you know, hang out with them and do my thing with them. And then, you know, when they're gone, maybe learn more, but along the way, I want to keep learning. And so basically what's my niche? I'm going from one method to another without fully trying it out. So I'm just, I'm floundering. And I finally kind of settled on, you know, I want a day trade. I love that, but I can't do that. I've got a job and other things to do. So anyway, hopefully I've kept that as concise as possible because there's a lot to that. But um, I've kind of got to the conclusion where, okay, it just seems to me like the iron condor slash oil trading is kind of what I want to do. So I've got, I've just done all sorts of trading, all sorts of things, but I don't, like I don't do this. I don't stick with it. I see another method come through. I'm like, oh, let's try this. I see something else come through. Oh, let's try this. And, I, and so I'm, and in doing that, I guess I wanted to try out a lot. I just took mm-hmm. a lot of webinars. So I actually probably know a decent amount. Like if, if you show me a chart and say, tell me what you see. or I, I actually know, I think I think I know a lot, but I, I can't really put it to work. And so I thought of you recently because finally, I think I know what appeals to me. I, I know what I, like, what I want my niche to be. Um, but that doesn't mean I can't switch it, but at least if I land on something that appeals to me that will work, then I think I can, if I want to delve into something else, fine, but at least don't do that until you've kind of gotten off the ground. There are traders that are making money and traders that are losing money. Simple as that. I'm, a, I'm not on the one side. As soon as I get on the one side, even if it's a little bit with some form of consistency, then, oh, okay, I can branch from there. But so what appealed to me was, and basically, it's, it's, it's this whole building and account thing. I mean, all these mess, all these investment opportunities out there that that people are getting into that I hear about that I, that I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, trading. It just, it just appeals. It just seems like trading is a lot simpler way to build an account than starting some business. It takes some discipline in that. But I, I just think from what I hear about you and other other people on the up and up as far as options trading, that it's very doable. So basically. Um, I, I thought about you because I, what appeals to me is iron condor trading on the indexes and oil trading. I was almost like right now, I, I don't want to do any stocks. I just want to keep it very streamlined. And um, so basically, I'm, I, I'm here to ask you, I've got some ideas, but we'll, I'm going to find, I wanted to find out from you if, if, they're, if they would work or if that's how you do it. So basically, uh, like I said, I've, I've done scans for stocks. I've done all sorts of things, and it just they just seem to make me stretch to be stretched too thinly with my old life. And so mm-hmm. I thought, well, if I can just streamline this to what I think will work, I can still definitely be. It's not like I don't want to learn. I want to learn, but I think I want to learn and learn my method and get really good at that, and not try to just learn about other things before I've um, right. landed on this. And so. The, the, what again? What appeals to me is I, I've been on and off for oil. Do I do it? Do I not? Do I do it? Do I not? And finally, I thought, you know what? Yeah, I I, I want to do I want to tackle the oil thing, and I think I want to tackle the um the iron condor on the indexes thing. So my question to you was, okay, what would you, as far as let's take the iron condor thing. Um, I like the monthly butterflies, the monthly calendar, the monthly double diagonals. I've learned those from another source. You know, they're kind of the monthly workhorse trades that you just kind of rinse and repeat. And you're a big iron condor guy. So I guess in order to find out what I kind of would like to do works, would work, do you, if you took, and that's why I'm going to ask a kind of a pointed question. I don't, so if you took an iron account and let's just call it a hundred thousand dollars because that's just a round number and you, um, and you just traded, Iron condors off the SPX and the Russell, 
you know, they might be long balls, they might be shorter ones, but if you just said, okay, I'm, I'm dedicating this account to iron condors uh, where I'm not white knuckling anything and just following the rules, what could you, you do a year um, percentage wise? You, Alan. Is that your question? <laughs> well, okay. uh, all right, so that's one me, of them. It's like, right. I like, so I'm, you know, what am I going to do with my chunk of money that I just transferred to an IRA? And, and, and that's one of them, iron condors and oil. But I want to make – I just have some ideas on how I would do it. But you might say, no, 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 that's not – Right. How you so let me, let me come back to that. I'm, I'm, so I'll get to the answer, but let me come back to that. Now, before we go any further, I have to tell you and everybody listening, first of all, thank you for letting this be recorded. And I wanted to record this because, like you said, you know, you said you're not unique. I believe that you are unique. Your everybody's situation is a little bit different. But the boat that you're in, the situation that you're in, there are a lot of people that are in a very similar situation. And the questions that you had asked me in the email originally, I thought of that and I was like, wow, you know, there are so many people that are thinking the same exact thing. So that if we can get this as a two way conversation, and you having questions, I sharing my experiences and trying to lead you in certain directions, I think it would be beneficial for, for everybody um, that's listening. Now, before – and then I have to profess it and say that, you know, I'm not a licensed financial planner. I cannot give you specific financial individual advice. It's about telling you, hey, you know, do this or buy this or, you know, securities or whatnot, I can get in trouble if I do any of that. So we are going to basically give you some advice in a sense of what I would do if I was in your situation, what I do, because I am I am in a similar situation to you as well. Maybe I'm a little bit further down the line, so I have my answers or what I want to do. What we need to figure out is exactly what you want to do and then get you on the right path so that you can learn exactly what you need to do so that you can get it done. So that being said, let me, I do have some questions for you. The four teenagers that you have, are they going to be going to college anytime soon? How old are they? Uh, senior, freshman, freshman, seventh grade. Okay. College is taken care of or you're still going to be paying for that or they're doing scholarships and doing their own or how's that going um, to work? College is, I'm not worried about college right now. College is, I've got college under, uh, taken care of, um, okay. without trading, without trading. So I'm mainly looking, I'm mainly, I brought that up because it's just something I'm you know, obviously involved in right now and dealing with, but mainly I'm thinking about, uh, future as in retirement and during retirement. Okay. And are any of those kids financially minded? Would they be interested in trading? Uh, yeah, I think so, and that brings up a good point, um, and I'll be quick about it. Part of the reason why I want to learn this, too, is because I want to pass it on to them to some extent. I just feel like it's a great opportunity, and if I don't learn it, I kind of feel like I'm doing them a disservice because I'm, I know a decent amount about it, and I gotta. if I don't actually land myself somewhere, I feel like I won't be able to teach them what I think I, sh- I, I should or lead them the way where I should. So, yeah, I think they do. Okay. Some of them, yeah. All right, cool. Because you told me that, you know, the following of the rules is an issue, right, for you. So that is, that's really like a mental thing. And yeah. I think in the past, it's because you didn't really take it that seriously. It wasn't that important. Like it was great. Hey, you know, this is cool and all, but you lose interest very quickly. So I think we really need to dial down on the goal or the why, you know, why are you doing this? You really need to figure that out. What is the actual goal that you have? Is it to retire from your job? Is it to have a certain nest egg? Is it to, you know, buy a house? Whatever it is, we need to make that more concrete. And once it is more concrete and you review that, you know, every day, like before you go into your trades or before you go to work or while you're brushing your teeth, you look at that goal, that is going to solidify in your in your brain that, you know, this is important. And I need to pay attention to this. And then that way, that's one of the tricks you can use to help you start following the rules. The other one that you could do is, and I talk about this in one of our, in our trading hacks program, but you can get somebody to trade with you. And if it's a child or a spouse that's interested, that's great. They don't have to be completely interested, but they have to have authority over you in a sense where you give them some basic information about what you're doing. You know, they, they don't have to know intricate details. If you're trading iron condors, they don't need to know 
you know, what are your strikes every day and, and what is a delta and, and all this stuff. But they need to have a sheet where they come in every day at a specific time or they text you or whatever and they ask you specific questions. You know, what is your delta of your short strike? And it could just be them just reading off the, off a sheet, right? You know, when are you going to adjust? Are you close to being, a, you know, what is your rule for this? What happens if the market goes up one standard deviation? What happens if the market goes down? And then you have to answer them. Now, to them, it doesn't matter what the answer is. Their only job is to make you go through that process every single day that you're in the trade so that you follow the rules, right? And after mm -hmm. you mess up on a trade or after you lose on a trade, then they're going to come back with a separate sheet and say, okay, why did you lose? Give me a specific reason. And then you have to come up with that reason. And then eventually they'll see a pattern, right? If you keep losing trade after trade for the same reason, they're going to be like, hey, dad, what's going on, right? And okay. you have to answer to them. So you, you can't just blow them off and say, hey, you know, son, I'm not answering you today. You know, because I didn't, I didn't focus on my trade. Well, I'm not answering you. No, he, you know, that's part of the, the discipline you have to instill in yourself if you want to do this seriously. And so, you know, when I did it, I was just like you. I, I didn't check in on my trades. And there are a lot of times, you know, if there's not much going on, the markets are not moving much, I don't check in on my trades very much. And then I have somebody else that asks me, you know, it's like, hey, what happened? How's this trade doing? How's this trade doing? How's this trade doing? And I have to actually go in, log into my computer, log into my brokerage account, check everything, and then make those answers. Because for me, it's a livelihood thing, right? It's not just for fun. Mm -hmm. And so if I mess up, that's money that's not going to come into the household for that month. And so I had to figure out a way that, okay, I know that this is a problem for me. I lose interest just like you do. You know, these trades are boring because there's not so much excitement every day that's up and down, up and down, getting in and out. We're not... You know, there's no um, dopamine hit every single day. You see it? Oh, okay, mm -hmm. it's moving. Oh, yeah, hey, market's up 10 points. Oh, market's down 20 points. Okay, my trade is fine. I don't have to do anything. And so day after day after that, you kind of forget about it because it's not a routine. So you really need to build a habit. If you can build a habit of checking your trades every day, then that's great. If not, you need to use a hack like getting somebody else to come in and ask you these questions. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Cool. So if you can find somebody like that, that'd be great. Somebody that's already trading, somebody that's a, you know, a spouse or a child that is interested or not even interested, but they'll be like, yeah, I'm going to hold you, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and I'm going to ask you these questions every day at a certain time frame so that, you know, you have that reliability. Even if you forget, even if you fall down on the job, they come in and they're like, okay, what are the, what are the answers? And then you just answer them and that's it. It takes roughly like two or three minutes of your time every day to just go through them and say, this is what's going on. And if you need to do something, then you do it, right? Because most of the time we don't follow our rules is because, you know, we don't make the adjustments that we need to. But if it's in black and white and the person is standing right there, you're like, yeah, okay, according to my rules, I need to adjust. Okay, well then go ahead and do it. So that is something that I would look into as well. Now. Okay. You are, from what I checked in our records, you have both of our Iron Condor course and you have the blank check, which is the oil options course, correct? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Have you been through both of those? Yes. Okay. So you face another problem that's very common where people get sidetracked because we're on, like once you get on one email list about options, somehow you get on a hundred different lists about options yep. and trading and this and that. And a lot of these other companies, you know, they'll sell your information and they'll sell their list to other people. Right. So you're just bombarded every single day, bombarded. And that's their job. That's the company's whole main goal is to get you to buy more and more and more stuff. So you got to clean the clutter and you got to get off all these email lists, a lot of them, most of them. If it's not providing you value, if it's just sending you offers to buy stuff every day, then you need to get out of it. And one of the things that we focus on is, you know, like, what is the one thing or the one strategy that makes the most sense to you? You know, if it's because you told me, oh, I'm looking at oil and I'm looking at condor. So I'm going to I'm going to take a step back and say, no, right now you're not allowed to do that. You're allowed to pick one, whether it's a simple credit spread, 
and not even the condor, or if it's the condor, or if it's the oil, but you can pick one. And if, if you need to go even simpler than that, then let's go simpler than that. You know, let's let's just do a covered call, and let's get consistent in that so that you build up your confidence and you build up the account and say, okay, you know, I'm doing this right. And in the beginning, you know, I don't know how much how much cash you have available, but until you are consistent for at least three or four months, I would even say you do this and you do paper trading. You don't put your real money in because, you know, as you mentioned, you're doing different things. You're not focused. I don't want you risking your money until you do have that focus, until you have figured out, okay, what is my goal? Why am I doing this? And you make it a must. You know, not this is not a this is not a I'm just dabbling kind of thing. It's like okay, you know, you, you had a, a realization. You you woke up to the fact that you know, hey, I'm 48. <laughs> you know, time's running out, and I'm not going to have the money that I need that I want to retire. So how do I do it? Well, you have all the tools. You have all the courses. You have access to everything that you need. You've already paid for it, so you don't need to buy anything else. You just need to find the one strategy that makes the most sense to you and then just plug in and just single-minded focus, you know, put the blinders on and just go at this and forget everything else. Do not worry about anything else. Don't read all this other crap that, that you, you know, all the emails that come in and on the financial media and the ads and all that stuff. Just focus on one thing that makes the most sense that you think that you can learn or get good at consistent the fastest. And then once you have that one and then you put real money at it, you, you'll start seeing it and you'll start feeling good. And then, and only then would you want to break out and say, okay, now I'm going to add strategy number two because I want to diversify or whatnot. Now, some of these you don't really need to because, I mean, in both of these, iron condors on, on indexes and the oil trade, you know, we have people that are trading these with hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that's the only thing they do. You know, I got a friend who lives on Lake Tahoe. He does one. I remember you talking about, yeah. He does one massive iron condor yeah. trade every month. And now it doesn't stay mm-hmm. as a, a familiar iron condor with four legs. You know, he's always adding mm-hmm. legs and subtracting and adding contracts and subtracting contracts. Cause he's, he's more into it. He's looking at the Greeks. So he's managing by what the Greeks are telling him. And so, you know, it changes, it morphs, but it starts off as an iron condor and he does just one trade every month. And then we have plenty of our students in the blank check course, which are only doing oil and they're making a living doing that. So, it's definitely doable. It's possible. I don't think you're there yet. So, I mean, you told me that you've been doing this for 10 years. You know enough about it. So, you know, we have this thing called the option continuum, which is like from option zero to option 10, you know, where are you, you know, option, option zero is you don't know anything about options. Option 10 is like you're a professional money manager managing money for other people using options. So I think you're somewhere in like level six or level seven where you know enough to be dangerous, I think that's level five, but you've been studying this so that you you don't need a lot of hand-holding. You can figure it out. You know the lingo. You know the jargon. You put on trades. You have experience. What we need now is just a little bit of discipline and just picking on one, just focusing on one, and the discipline to stay in that one thing until you go further. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yep. now the other thing that you had asked me in the email was how I manage my stuff. And so up to maybe two or three years ago, I was doing all everything. You know, I was doing oil. I was doing more and more oil. I was doing the condors that do all the option genius stuff. Simon puts on his trades for our Simon Says Advisory, and I do all those as well. And then we also do the weekly trades, and then I have my own retirement accounts that I manage in which I do – I own stocks in those, and then I do covered calls on those. I do no, naked puts on those, and then credit spreads on the stocks that I own. So, you know, I was, like, all over the place doing lots of different things, and I got to the point where, you know, I hit – so I'm 42 now. So this was roughly when I was hitting like 40 or a little bit about after 40. And it was like, okay, so what do I want to do with my life? You know, I'm spending time trading all this stuff, but what is, what comes after you have all the money? 
You know, once you're, once the, mm -hmm. like, you know, with your job, you have enough money coming in, so you're not worried about it. Um, but what comes after that? You know, what's the next step? And so for me, I decided the next step was going to be to help other people and tell more people about options. But also, I wanted to create a way where I could still have the income from the options, but not spend so much time on it and not have the big risk. So we don't talk about this much in options, especially like, you know, if you're an iron condor trader, right, the biggest risk is, you know, a big bear market or like a flash crash market or, you know, when the market is down 20, 30% in a month, that's going to kill your iron condor unless you're very quick to the trigger and you're, you're really good at it where you're buying puts and hedging all your positions and whatnot. But as an option seller, right, we make money in calm markets. So if the market's going up, we're fine. The market's going down, we're fine. market's going sideways is fine. But when we get hurt the most is when the market changes direction very quickly. So if it's been going up mm -hmm. and up and up, and then boom, you know, one week is just down 10%, well, that's going to kill a lot of our positions. Or just the opposite, it's going down and then it just V-shapes recovery back up. That's going to kill a lot of positions. So how do you remove that type of risk without letting go of the gains or the, the benefits of options? And so that's when I came up with something that I call passive trading. And so I've been working on that, moving over my retirement accounts and transitioning into that, my other stuff. And we're working on a course. We have a course right now that we've created based on these strategies. And we're working with a bunch of people that are in the course right now and trying to get them results as soon as possible. I haven't released it yet, but basically the idea of that is we want a foundation Okay, and then this really depends on how much money you have. So if you had, you know, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars or more, you know, that would be like your end goal, right? So this is how much money I have. I need to have enough money out of this so that I can live comfortably, retire early, whatever the, the goal is. So if you had this larger amount of money, the foundation would be in dividend paying stocks. You know, good, high-quality names, dividend-paying stocks, and then we would trade around those positions, meaning we would do iron – uh, not iron counters, but we would do cover calls, and we would do naked puts, and we would do credit spreads on those stocks. Okay. So it's a matter of picking, you know, a handful of names, four or five names that we want to own, getting good dividends from those, reinvesting our dividends into the same stock, and then using options to boost our return on those. So, you know, if we're getting like a 7-8% return from the stock, we're getting like 3% from the dividend, so that'd be like, you know, maybe 10%. You know, we're adding another 10% a year from our options. So we're getting not 10%, but we're getting 20%. So we're doubling what we are, could make if we were just in the stock itself. Okay. And that literally takes maybe 10 minutes a month. Right? Cause you're breaking it down okay. and you're, you're making it just cookie cutter. Okay. These are the stocks I own. These are the only ones I'm watching. These are the only ones I'm going to be trading. And this is the trade I'm doing. So all I need to do is just, you know, if I'm doing covered calls, all I need to do is either roll a call or let my current call expire and sell another one. And if we're doing puts, it's the same thing. We either do another one or just roll it. Do another one or just roll it. And that, to me, is the easiest way for anybody to get started with options and to really ramp up their money. Now, if you don't have that money in the beginning, you don't have, you know, four or $500,000 to put in the stocks, then we also talk about, you know, you can do what's called the poor man's covered call, which is you're using long options or, sorry, leap, mm -hmm. leap options and then selling covered calls on those. Or you just do credit spreads on the same stocks that you want to buy until you have enough where you can actually start buying those and investing in those. Because what I found, especially in, what was it, this past November, right, when the market, and was it December? I forgot when it was, but it was November, December time frame, market dropped like 20%. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really worried, you know, because my stocks are losing, yes, but my option price, my options that I'm selling on these stocks are all expiring. And so we've had a good bull run for the last several years. And so starting in January, you know, you know, I remember I was selling calls on all of these stocks. 
and they're all going up, 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 and I'm still selling calls against them and rolling them higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, and then they all went down, and then finally all those options expired. So I had this big, you know, really nice windfall, and then now that their stocks are going back up, then I'm repeating the same process. Does that make sense? So that is something you can do as well. That is what I'm focusing more and more on. I'm still going to be doing oil because I love it. I'm still going to be doing iron condors, but more and more of my money is going to the sense because I'm looking at the future, right? I'm looking like, okay, when I stop doing Option Genius, what do I want to do? What do I want to do with my life? And Mm -hmm. I want to be in a position where I have the money coming in. I don't want to give it to a money manager and make, you know, four or five percent after all their fees and whatnot in a good year. I want to still be able to manage it, own good quality stuff, have good income, uh, you know, at least 20 percent a year. But I want to spend like maybe 10 minutes a month. And so this is what I found looking at like a thousand different things. This would be the simplest way for me to get the result that I wanted without putting up a lot of time. So I, I think that that was one of the things you asked for, like, you know, how do you trade without spending a lot of time on it? Well, mm-hmm. if you don't have the time, because oil is very fast moving, and so you got to watch it daily. Iron condors can be laid back, but it's kind of like playing poker. Somebody, somebody told me this about poker. They're like, you know, poker is hours and hours of boredom, and then, you know, like 30 seconds of super much excitement, where you have to be on the edge of your seat. So that's kind of what like an iron condor is. Most of the time, it's going to be very slow, very methodical, very easy to do. But then when the volatility spikes, you have to be ready to change your mentality as well. And that's when a lot of people get lulled into a sense of security where, you know, they don't move fast enough when the volatility spikes. And that's when they get hurt with iron condors. So that's like the biggest drawback to the condor is that it kind of puts you to sleep. And then when it's time to wake up, you're kind of groggy and you're not moving fast enough. So based on that, I would say, you know, you have already two things that you you have an interest in. I showed you a third one just now, if that's the way you're going. But really what I would like you to do is just pick one of those, focus on it, spend some time on it, spend, you know, two, three, four months putting on these trades and just really – you know, getting that experience and just doing it over and over and over again so that it's second nature and not paying attention to anything else. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. like, even if you were to, like, I would even say go as far as not even paying attention to the news. Like, if you're doing the Iron Condors on the indexes, forget the news. Don't even watch CNBC or, or Bloomberg or, or whatever. You know, just watch the charts watch the volatility, and trade based on your trading plan accordingly. And you'll do probably better that way in the beginning without all these other instances coming in because a lot of times when we we know we don't adjust properly is because, oh, hey, you know, there's a meeting coming out from the Fed in two days. Even though I need to adjust right now, you know, I'm going to wait for that Fed meeting. And by then, it might be too late for your trade. So forget the news. Forget all these other advertisements and stuff. Pick one thing. Focus on it for three or four months. If you have to get help, you know, get somebody to help you out and come and ask questions for like three or four minutes a day just so that you have to go through the mental process of looking at every single one of your trades every single day. Okay. Because I know you have the time. You said that, right? You have the time. So it's not like you can do it during the day. You don't have to do it at night after the market closes. So that's a benefit. But if you could do that, if you can do those three or four things that I laid out, I think within six months, you'll have a much better idea of how much and, you know, how much you can actually do from this. So your question earlier was, you know, if, if I was only trading credit spreads on indexes, what is a good, what is a, a normal return that you could get? I think it really depends on each individual and it depends yeah. on the, the trading plan that you use. So now for Option Genius, my trading plan is a little bit more conservative and more hands-off because we go out a little bit further in time and further away from the money. You can also come in closer to the money with less time, get a much higher premium, get much you know much more greater percentage, and then be out of the trade faster. But that model, you have to watch it more and you have to be able to adjust faster. So it really depends on how much time you can put into it and what your temperament is. You know, if you're willing to take the risk a little bit for a bigger gain, then you might want to go for a shorter time frame. 
if you want to be more conservative and just be more hands off and just look at it once in a while, then the more the the further away from the money is better. Okay. Okay. So now I know I've been I've been throwing a lot of stuff at you. What are you thinking? Well, a lot of what you say makes sense. I understand it. You know what you said real quickly about the news. It's funny how you listen to the news and listen to these events, and it and then later on you look at the charts. It didn't seem to the charts still generally speaking, seemed to do what they were going to do. It's just it's odd how the news definitely can affect a movement, but overall it seems like you can't look at a chart and look back and go, where was the news? Because it just, it just seemed like the chart was going to do what it's going to do. So, so someone, and I've heard that from somebody else. They go, I don't, even, I don't care what announcements are today. I, I don't watch that. And they're, they end up being fine because they end up almost being influenced by pre-announcements instead of just, you know, going with their plans. That was interesting that you said that too. I, now I, that, that applies only right? to the indexes. That applies to the indexes. Right, right, exactly. That applies yeah. to all the yeah, financial yeah. news about, oh, the tariff wars we got going on and the wall stuff and everything else. I mean, that stuff is just secondary noise. If you're watching a stock, if you're trading a stock, then you have to know when earnings is going to be. Yeah, that is a definite. You're right. I just, I was just thinking about the SPX or the Russell when you were, when you said that. Right. Just not stock. Yes, just indexes. I, no, I think that sounds good. I had some ex- ex- more targeted questions about the condors and the oil. I can ask you those later, too, if you like, okay. as it relates to a plan that I was thinking about. Well, first of all, for oil, what are, you know, it seems like you're going off a, a $10,000 account when you go on Facebook, you know, when you're putting your trades on, you know, your three, your two calls or your one footer. Generally speaking, what what are you looking to, to do per year on, when you trade the blank check plan? What's the general idea? So I go into each month, and it doesn't matter the account size. I only use that as an example. Okay. So okay. I have okay. I have separate accounts for the, that are much larger. But okay. you know, for this reason, I want to have – like I do this with Option Genius as well. I'll have a separate account mm-hmm. for that with $10,000 okay. so that I can tell people how many contracts I'm actually doing. Because I always get okay. that question, like, you know, how much do I allocate? Do I allocate the whole – if I have 10000 do I put all 10000 into this first? No. <laughs> you know, I have 10000 as well. I'm doing two contracts. Okay? So that's what okay. you should do. Now, obviously, there's a lot more money sitting in the account. We're going to save that for adjustments or other trades. Um, so that's okay. that's why. And if somebody has, like, 20000 then they can do double what I'm doing if they want to follow along in that. Right. That's the only reason. But I go into each month with blank check looking for or trying to get or wanting to get 10%. And that's 10% on the entire account, whatever is in that account. So if it's 10000 I want to make 1000 bucks every month from that account. We don't get it all the time, right? Because, I mean, there are, there are months that we're going to make less. There are months that we're going to lose money. Overall, if I can get 5%, I'm very happy. But I feel that it's a wasted month if I lose money, you know, unless it's like okay. something that came out of the blue that I couldn't, you know, because oil is, okay. it moves much faster. So it can move to the point where, okay, we really couldn't do anything even though we followed all the rules. And, you know, we okay. took a small loss and we got out and we're done for the month. We'll make it up next month because it doesn't stay volatile very long. It doesn't stay volatile forever. So we can easily make that up in the next month. So in that sense, it's very important that we don't try to, how do you say this? We don't try to win on every single trade because sometimes you don't want to be in it because it's just too volatile. Okay. So you have to be aware of that as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, so that's good to know. So, as well. so, you know, part of the rules we talk about, hey, you know, these are the adjustments that we make. Okay, so if we're doing an adjustment, that's fine. If you're forced to do another adjustment, then you're on the wrong side, right? We, we, we did something wrong. Either the market changed and it went against us or we didn't read the chart, we didn't read the chart properly and we're on the wrong side. So that's it. You know, if this second adjustment doesn't work, we're done for the month. And that's how you limit your losses. Okay. okay. Um, so that, that that helps because it helps me look at, you know, you know, opportunity. Like, let's say you have got $100,000 and you're like, you know, do I give it to, do I go, do I give it to a private lender? Or do I invest in this real estate or this and that, you know, and then, you know, because a lot of my colleagues and friends are doing that with some success. But I look at that, like, for instance, at the blank jet traders going, well, geez, I mean, if I could learn to do, 
you know, even 3% a month, that's 36% a year. That's t- double what anyone else is doing. So that, that leads me to believe like, geez, I need to learn how to do this because it's very streamlined as opposed to running a business or doing a new advent- uh, business venture. And that's why I was trying to get out of what you're looking to get per month. Because if I even lowered it to 3%, you might, you, you know, you probably would say to me, oh, yeah, that's a breach. I don't know. If, you know, if I said, okay, your goal is 3% a month, you might. And so if, if that's kind of the case, that makes me feel like, yeah, I do need to tackle this because, you know, that might be the low end and that's still better than anything else you're going to do by giving your money to somebody else. The other question I had about iron condors was I always kind of wanted to do a situation where, it, like, where's the sweet spot? It seems like it's the 45-day-ish 10 Delta iron condor. That seemed like it reoccurred in some other, in some other people's um teaching methods also. So let's just say that's the case and I'll ask you if that's true or not in a minute. So you take 45 day iron condor, 10 delta, and you've got a hundred thousand dollars. I'm just using a round number and say, well, I'm only going to put a third of my, and let's say you're, let's say you're doing 50% of your money is, is in the market out of the hundred thousand dollars because you need to save some for adjustments. And I don't know if that's a good rule too. I just thought to myself, okay, 50, half, half. And then you do a third of your position meaning uh, I'm going to put on iron condor today and then 10 days I'm going to put on my second one. And then another t- 10 days, they're all going to be 45 days out. And then another 10 days I'm going to put on another. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically putting on three a month and then every 10 days, let's just say they went to expiration every 10 days, I'd be taking one off. So I just stagger them. And then, you know, with watching your iron condors from hell videos, I thought to myself, well, geez, if, if you could, or even two a month. I forget how I did the math, but let's say, you, yeah, let's say you did two a month. So you had to split your position because you're actually doing, you're staggering them by, you're having the same days to expiration, but you're putting, you're staggering them, you know, two weeks apart. I thought if you could win on one, your goal, and you could scratch on the other and not really lose, on that money, you'd be making 10%, you may, in other words, you'd be making 10% a month on half of your account because half of it's, you know, sitting on the sidelines. So that would be 60% a year on your account because 10% a month is, you know, times 12 is 120, but you're only doing it on half your account. Does that seem reasonable or is that like way off in the clouds? I mean, the 60% number sounds high, but then when you break it down and say, well, I'm going to win on one and scratch on the other every month, even if I don't have an iron condor from hell video, it seems like that iron condor method might fly, you know, yes or no, I guess. It's more tricky when we're talking about iron condors because there are so many different ways to do it. I would say that if you take a look at it, because we like to think of, okay, what can I get in a month? What can I get in a year, right? You're like, okay, if I can get 5%, then that's 60%. Okay, that's great. Well, are you going to do 60% every single year or does the market change? You know, obviously I think the market changes and so – there are going to be some months or some years, if we take a little bit longer time frame, you know, if we go after 10 years or 12 years or 15 years, there will be some years where you're doing iron condors and you're going to make over 100% a year. And then there are going to be some years where you're actually going to lose money. So it's, uh, you know, you're looking at it a month-to-month picture. Year by year is the same thing. There are going to be some times where you're just going to hit it out of the park, and there will be some times where you're actually going to be negative for the year because of market volatility and it just unexpected stuff going on in the markets. You know, 2000, whatever, a little financial crisis, that was a horrible time for iron condor people because it just kept bouncing up and down and up and down with no rhyme or reason. And so at that time, it was a great time to be out of the market and just be like, okay, I'm going to stay on the sideline until the VIX comes down to, you know, something a little bit more manageable for my iron condors. So, what could you normally expect? It depends on the trading plan and what it is. And then the other thing is like, you know, you mentioned the 45, 10 delta. That is very common. That is very, you know, a lot of people talk about that. And putting on the trade, I think that one is the most, is pretty conservative. So you have a very good chance of making a good amount of money with that. But then also in that Iron Condor course, you know, I talk about it where, you know, putting on the trade is super simple. Right, you go to SBX, 45 days of expiration, look for 10 delta, boom, sell it, done. Okay, anybody yeah. can do that. But the point of the what separates the winners from the losers is how you adjust and what is your methodology for adjustment. 
I had a friend, he's in real estate, and he, one of his real estate buddies was like, oh, man, I just got to tell you about this iron condor thing. It's so awesome. And he knew that I was trading options. So he learned a little bit from the guy, and then he learned the strategy, and then he came and asked me about it. And basically, it's the same thing. It's, you know, you do an iron condor, SBX, 45 days, I think it was 40 days or something, 10 delta. You put it on, and then you just don't do anything. It's either going to win or it's going to lose. And yeah. so I told my friend, I said, you know, I think that doesn't make a lot of sense because you're like, you losing control of the trade. The reason that we're, we're managing our own money is because we control it and we can use our brains. But if you're just putting on a trade and then not doing anything, if you, if you can tell, hey, look, this trade is going to be 100% looser, then it doesn't make a lot of sense because in the iron condor, it's very, 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 very crucial that you don't have those 100% losers because they're very hard to recover from. You know, one of those is going to yeah. mess up your whole year. And so we use the adjustments so that we can keep our losses smaller and get out at a quicker basis. So, you know, his whole thing was, okay, that was a strategy. Just put it on. And, you know, th he got it from, you know, these famous guys on. They were with Thinkorswim. Now they have their own brokerage. And that was what they used to preach, you know, that you put this on and you just don't let the let the percentages work in your favor and don't worry about it. Well. My friend, wow. he did it for a few months, and he was like, hey, this is working great, but I'm, but he's very analytical. So he goes, you know what? I want to test if this actually works over the long term. And so he found somebody, he hired them, and they went back in time, I think about 15, diff 15 years, and they put the trade on every single month on SBX and RUT. They did both, SBX and RUT, for like, like 15 years. Can you, tell, can you take a guess of what the results were? So if you did this, if you did that without touching it on both of those for 15 years, what do you think the results were? I got to believe they're going to be, I'm trying not to be safe, maybe break even at best just because I've gone to max loss on a couple. And I know that that blows out, that takes, takes nine trades or 10 or 11 winners out of your way. And I know that that, I don't know, break even or losing money? They broke even. It pretty much broke okay. even. After all the fees and everything, they lost money. So, yeah, you're right. Okay. I mean, after doing that, you know, for years, he's like, you know, what the hell? <laughs> he's like, this high condor stuff doesn't work. I was like, well, yeah, do it that way. It doesn't work. You know, you do it my way. It's a little yeah. bit more work. But, yeah, it, you know, you can actually do something with it. And so, to me, that was eye-opening. I was like, oh, this is really cool. This is like real legitimate data. And what he did to do that was he back-tested. And that is something that I would say I would advise you to do as well. If you have the time and if you don't want to wait, you know, find a, get a back testing software and go back the last 10 years, 20 years, whatever, find your, take your trading plan, your iron condor trading plan and just trade it month after month after month on the software day by day by day and see how you would do. The one I use is called option net explorer. I think it's like okay. 600 or $700 a year for it, but you can buy like a shorter time frame if you want. But the thing is that you can actually trade one month of Iron Condor in like five minutes or less. Oh, that's cool. You know, because, you know, you put it, you go to a specific date and it looks just like your broker software and you type in, okay, I want to sell two of these, buy two of these, sell two of these, buy two of these, commit the trade. And then you just walk through it day by day, and it shows you the charts. It shows you the, the deltas of your options, the prices, everything. You can even look at the chart before you put on a trade and say, okay, I think it's, you know, I think it's bullish, bearish, whatever. This is how I want to do it. And then you just walk through it day by day by day. And then when your trade gets to an adjustment point, then you can just adjust it. Now, of course, it's not real-time pricing, but it's close enough. And so you adjust it, and you commit it, and then you just go keep going through it. You do that for five or six years, and you'll realize, okay, this particular trading plan either works or it doesn't. And most of the time, you'll find out that the trading plan works. Some of the times, you'll find out that you take the same trading plan, and you start doing it for real, in real money, and you start losing money. And you're like, what the heck happened? Right? And that happened to me a lot, too. I was like, it was, it was working on the back testing. Mm -hmm. Why is it not working now? There's a couple of reasons. Yeah. Number one, maybe it's a different market, but most likely it's because you are doing it differently. Because when you're doing the back testing, you're not looking at the news. You don't know what's going on. 
Right? You're just looking at a chart right. and you're just hitting the button. What happened the next day? What happened the next day? Just show me the price. Just show me the price. Just show me the price. And that's how you're trading. You're not looking at anything going on around you and you're focused on the trade. So it's not like, you know, a day goes by where you're not looking at the trade because you're just pushing the button day by day by day and you're examining the trade every single day. So you're completely focused on it. So you're not watching the news and you're completely focused. So you're just going to trade better naturally because of that. Okay. So that goes back to oh, the stuff that we were talking about originally, you know, having the discipline. So. Okay. Okay. That, that's interesting actually. The, and then, yeah, it all goes back to are you going to, are you going to be consistent and do it how you're supposed to do it every time, whether, you know, period, just, you know, rain or shine, are you going to follow the, be your consistent rules? Is there iron condors that you can still lose on? I mean, I, I watched your video on iron condors from Helen. It, it almost seemed like you could you could almost trade your way out of any one of them, at least for an extremely small loss or scratch, and that way you'd let all your winners run and you'd pretty much lose on little or none. Is that not true, or how does that work? If you, if I figured, so I saw you winning on coming up even at least on all three of those. I thought, well, geez, if you can come up even on those, you can probably scratch trade at least every iron condor. So the point of that video was I took like three of the worst ones over the years right. of us doing Option Genius, and I wanted to walk through them. And actually, I used this specific software that I just mentioned, Option Net, where yeah. I go through yeah. it day by day, and I wanted to show and expose, you know, what is going through my mind. Like, which adjustments do I use? Why do I do it? And I wanted to verbally just go through it day by day. So you guys would have a feeling and understanding of what is he thinking while he's making it. Mm -hmm. Why is he choosing that adjustment over something else? You know, and sometimes I looked at two or three different adjustments. I can do this. I can do this. Which one am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to do this one. Why? Because I did this, this. So you'd have a better, okay. you know, like as if you were sitting right next to me every day. I don't want you to feel that you can't lose because I, I lose on our condors. It's just, you know, it's part of the game. So you, you're going to lose. It might be something that you don't control. Um, it might be a different circumstance. So, for example, this was recently on one of our trades for Option Genius. We had a an SBX Condor, and it was doing fine the whole month. You know, the whole time it was doing great. Everything is fine. Two weeks before expiration, SBX starts to move in one direction. Uh -huh. And so that put my my calls, I think it was my calls, at risk. So I'm like, all right, so what do I do? I only got like two weeks left. Not a lot of time. I can either adjust it to the next month, which is a possibility, or I could just, you know, get out of it now. So at that point, I got out of it now, which was like a 5% gain or something, and I didn't want to take okay. a risk. But if you had not done that, because it wasn't at an adjustment point. So if I'm just, you know, just following my trading plan, Without thinking ah, about it, okay, yeah. you know, I would have just sat there and said, oh, hey, I don't have to adjust yet because it's not at a whatever, 20 delta, 25 delta, whatever the plan was, you know. But if that thing kept moving okay. up and up and up and it got to that 25 delta, now my trade is sitting at a loss and I got like three days left to expiration. Oh, great. What do I do now? You know, and then okay, it's so the it's only option. Then. No, then the only option is, okay, I got to take it to the next month, buy me some more time, and which is something I didn't want to do. So in those cases, I'd be like, okay, do I take it to the next month or do I not want to trade it at all because something has shifted in the marketplace and, you know, let me just take a small loss here and get out of it. And then I will wait until things calm down to get back in. And that's a good point because I didn't know whether you would say, no, no, you got to live and die by the rules because if you do that, you're going to start cutting your wins, you know, it, but I guess you really do have to be judicious because you, cause you don't want to cut your wins. You want to let them run, but you – definitely want to do what you just did so the question is how do you know when to do that and maybe that just goes back to hey it's not an automatic game you got you've got to have experience and just you know make some good judgment calls and make sure they're conservative i guess well when you're trading with a, a different account and different different trades you also have to look at you know say how did i do the rest of the on everything else and in that particular that particular account i had already done two trades that already had made me 10 percent each right so okay so okay so here's the thing. Okay, I have two trades done that made 10% each. Now I have this one trade that's up 5%. So I can either take my 5% and have a very nice month and I'm done, or I could roll the dice and try to make another 5 6%.
But if I lose on that, then I'm going to wash everything I already made. You know, what's the risk reward okay. in that scenario? So, sure, I'll take the bird in the hand in that sense, you know, instead of, okay, well, I can make another 5% on this trade, which to my overall account might make like an extra 1%. But if I lose on this trade, you know, I could lose 20% on this trade. That means for the overall month, I'm break even. So that really sucks. Okay. And that so goes you, back to the philosophy that I've learned, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you don't, you, bird in the hand is better. Um, what, what really hurts people is when they have a, a thinking where they're going into a trade and they're saying, you know what, on this particular iron condor, I can make 12%, but I'm gonna get out when I'm up 6%. I've seen a lot of people teach this particular strategy and it hurts. Because you're purposely limiting yourself in how much you can make. Because you're gonna have yeah. months where the month is awesome. SBX behaves beautifully. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to do anything. Those are the months where you have to take the maximum, right? You got to get 10%, 12%, whatever you can make. And then there are the other months where it's like a wild child and it's like, you know, bouncing up and down and you're like, man, if I could just get out of this with a break even, I'd be super happy or even losing like 5%. Now those are the months, okay. you know, both of those are on the different ends of the extreme. But if you're mm -hmm. going into the thing and saying that I'm only going to take 6%, even though I can get more because it's so, you know, calm, I'm going to get more. If you only take 6%, well, then when you lose 20%, then it's just too hard to overcome mm -hmm. the math. Yeah, yeah, and th that makes sense too. Yeah, I can see that side also. That's a big question that you answered today is like, can I do this and just follow the rules and, you know, make a little less, but maybe – but no, I guess if you truly follow the rules to the T too much without using any judgment, then, you know, that's disadvantageous too. So I can see how you're saying, all right, well, that way, that, that's another reason for just concentrating on one strategy because then you really, really become good at it. And instead of being decent at two or three strategy, be, being really good at one, you might be doing better financially and with less stress. So that kind of supports that point very well, I think. Exactly. Because then another thing is, I mean, we're not, we're not algorithms, right? We're not computers. You have the ability to not just focus on that. You can use your own methodology. You can use your own brain. And that's why I've never seen a bot or a trading software that does iron condors or credit spreads that has actually worked over the long term. Because you have to use your common sense sometimes. And then the other sense was when, you know, if you're picking one, like if you're picking SPX, to trade or rut, to trade condors on, or if you're picking oil on, you know, those are very specifically chosen where it's only one thing, right? And even when I told you about my mm -hmm. passive trading thing, I didn't tell you that, oh, I'm in 25 different stocks. No, I was like, I'm, I've narrowed it down to a very short list of things that I want to own so that I don't have to watch everything. I don't have to focus on everything. Even if you're only trading oil, that's one thing that you watch, you know? Everything else, it doesn't matter. What the hell's going on in the world? Doesn't really matter. I'm just watching my oil. That's what I'm trading, and that's what's going to work for me. Or if I'm only trading SPX, right? That's why I don't like doing condors on stocks because they move around too much can, and yeah. the news mm -hmm. affects them. So that's why, you know, indexes, ETFs, if you don't have the money, those are the best for, for trading condors. And even then, you know, if you want to focus on one, SBX or RUT, or if you want to diversify, then you can do both and then as, you know, add the other indexes. Even though all three of them, you know, they trade pretty much close together. A few different, a little bit here and there, but they normally trade pretty close together. So even if you just do one of those, you should be fine. Okay. Oh, do you also do oil directionally on your own? You know, on the side, or do you, you on your accounts just trade larger, but the same philosophy as a blank check? Very rarely will I play it directionally. Very, very rarely. Okay, all right. All right and that's good to know too, because there's times where I that I want to, but I can see how you know it works. Sometimes it'll burn you. Sometimes, so I'm trying to figure that out too. So that helps let the dust settle in my brain and um, you know take in everything you're saying and and develop a plan based on all that, which I think I can do. But 
the only thing I might do is is trade one one contract. Like if I'm doing the instead of paper trading, at least have some skin in the game by even even doing a contract in the spies, you know, on Iron, Iron Condor. So at least you know the max losses are still small. I'd never get there, but at least doing something. Um, but like then you, you got to watch it. Then you have to have the discipline to stick with it, follow the rules, and watch it. That's that's the I think that's I the will. habit I'm, I want you to develop. You know, and the simplest way I think to do I will it if is I have money in one thing. Right. I, I think if I have money in the game, the skin in the game, I'll do that more. <laughs> that's what I used trade. to say. I found out that wasn't always the case. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. It just, I mean, you get bored. You know, even if it's like a hundred bucks. All right, I got a hundred bucks. Big deal. You know, we spend more. You okay. go to dinner, well. you pay more than that. So it's like it's not. It's not enough, and if it's so, you really you have to know yourself. I can't tell you yes or no, right? Well, if, you're right. If you, yeah, you can do it. Go for it. But right. you know, that's what I, I would prefer you focus on one in the beginning because your goal here it doesn't. I don't care if you're trading oil or condors or or what you call it. It doesn't matter. Your only goal is to be consistent, right? To be profitable yep. on a yep. monthly basis and to be consistent. So if you can, if out of 12 months you're positive eight months out of the year and you lose four, but you come out way ahead, that's great, you know. But if you're losing one month and then making money and then losing money and then making money and then losing money, that's not what we want because that means you're right. out of control. You don't know what you're doing. So, you know, the odds, putting them in your favor, trading high probability, you're going to win a certain amount of time anyway, even if you have no clue what the hell you're doing. Okay. But if you're not consistent – Month after month, profitable or at least break even, that means you're doing something wrong. And so that is what I would want all of my students to get to, that level of consistency with one strategy. And then once you get there, okay, fine. Now I want to branch out into something else. Go for it. Okay. And that, that makes sense too. It's also a little bit liberating to know that, okay, I'm, I'm going to let go of everything else and just focus on one thing. It really is. The streamlining, yeah. at least to me, is a, it's kind of liberating. I don't, I don't like to have all those balls up in the air, especially when I don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so much less stress, and it's so much easier mm-hmm. to, to just to manage. It, it's really, it is, like you said, it's liberating. You know, we got some people in, that trade 30, 40 trades a month selling options, and I was like, I don't know how you, I don't know how you do it. You know, I can't do more than like 10, 12 trades at a time. I can't follow all of them. Yeah. I, I can say I've done that before, and I, it's, it's too mind. I lose track of some. I'm like, oh, I wasn't even watching this, and it's down, right? So I totally see that. You you really have to to narrow it down, and, and you know, start if you want to eventually branch out, fine, but it's got to be gradual. Because I can see how just throwing yourself in the lines then yep. with too early. Just okay. so yeah, that's that's good. Good advice. Thank you. Cool. Anything else? It gives me a good perspective. No, nope, I think I like I said, I'll ball it all over and. We may have a question here or there later, but I at least want to kind of take in all you're saying and develop a plan and, you know, not try it for a few months and then call you with questions if, you know, once I've actually done something and have some, a track record with something. Yeah. So, I mean, it'd be really I'll, cool. I'll, I'll we could do like a follow up and, and, you know, maybe like four or five, six months from now, we'll do a follow up and say, okay, so where were you, Keith? Now what do you do? Where are you now? And what's, you know, what's going forward? Ooh, that would hold me accountable. That's good. <laughs> that really is good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll keep in touch. I really appreciate. Yeah, this was very helpful. Very helpful. Awesome. Great. Okay. Well, again, thank you for letting it be recorded. I think we touched on we touched on a lot of different things here. So I would expect you to even you know listen to it a few more times. And anybody else that is in a similar boat as Keith, you know, go through this one again and again. And because there might be a sentence or two that I just like you know mentioned and I just glanced over but there there was a lot of depth for somebody who actually knows what they're looking for in this particular interview so so keith this was fun thank you so much yeah thank you all stocks are not created equal we've analyzed thousands of optionable stocks to find the very best ones to trade options on lucky for you you can just download the list for free get it at Simon says options.com forward slash stocks. Again, that's Simon says options.com forward slash stocks.